Good Thursday morning, everybody, and thanks so much for joining us here on KXAN Live. I'm Will Dupree coming to you from the KXAN Live studio. We go live now to a news conference that's about to begin at the Texas State Capitol. The Texas House Democrats are holding a news conference where they plan to call for a special legislative session to address the Uvalde school shooting. Let's listen in as that begins now. Turner, uh, I'm a state representative from House District 101 in Tarrant County, uh, Arlington, Grand Prairie. I also serve as the chair of the Texas House Democratic Caucus. And um, uh, before we, uh, you won't be hearing from everybody who's up here today in, uh, in, the, in the interest of time, but let me uh, just thank and recognize all the members who, who are here. Uh, very briefly, I represent Liz Campos, Donna Howard, Ana Hernandez, Ann Johnson, Victoria Niave, uh, John Busey, Tracy King, Cheryl Cole, Tony Rose, Mary Gonzalez, Retta Bowers, Aaron Zwiener, and Vicki Goodwin. Thank you all for, for being here today. Um, tomorrow marks the one month anniversary of the horrific Uvalde school shooting in which 19 students and two teachers were tragically murdered at Robb Elementary School. This was Texas eighth mass shooting in the last 13 years. In the aftermath of this tragedy, Texas House Democratic members turned to our communities. Over the past few weeks, Democratic representatives across the state have hosted a series of safe Texas town hall meetings to get feedback from our constituents and ask how they want to see Texas government respond to this latest tragic mass shooting. And for the past three weeks, from El Paso to Houston, from Dallas-Fort Worth to the Rio Grande Valley, what we have heard is clear. Texans want common sense gun safety legislation and they want it now. This morning, 58 members of the Texas House Democratic Caucus sent a letter to Governor Greg Abbott conveying what we have heard from our constituents, his constituents, and we have urged him to call an immediate special session of the legislature. We are calling on the governor to bring legislators back for a special session to pass, at a minimum, several common sense reforms that enjoy bipartisan support, including raising the age to purchase an assault weapon, enacting extreme risk protective orders, closing background check loopholes, and requiring that stolen guns be reported to law enforcement. With a new school year set to begin in less than two months, these are the reforms Texans are demanding now. Not next year, not someday, right now. Other leaders across the state agree that we need immediate action and have called upon the governor to convene the legislature for a special session. They include Texas big city mayors, a bipartisan coalition of mayors of our state's most populous cities, the commissioner's courts of Dallas, Tarrant, Travis, Harris, Cameron, and Bear counties. Those counties alone represent nearly our state's, uh, half our state's population. And to underscore that bipartisan call for action. I want to thank my own uh, Republican-controlled Tarrant County Commissioner's Court for lending their voice, voices to this issue. And of course, the Texas Senate Democratic Caucus and the Texas House Democratic Caucus. People of Texas want action, and they want it now. Governor Abbott is the only person who has the power to deliver on immediate action, and that's why we're here today. I'll now turn it over to Representative Mary Gonzalez, the Vice Chair of the Mexican-American Legislative Caucus. Buenos dias, good morning. Um, sadly, the people of El Paso understand the intolerable pain and stand with the community of Uvalde. As a representative from El Paso, it is hard to stand up here again when we've been here before, when we've had the same calls over and over again. It's hard because how many of us have heard from children that they're scared? Children don't have to be scared. We can change our communities and our cultures, but the only way to do that is advance policies that encourage that change. And that's why I'm so honored to be standing with my colleagues today. Because in 2019, we all remember that 23 people were killed and dozens were injured in a, the horrific and tragic shooting in El Paso. The, um, the alleged shooter was racially motivated, wrote in his manifesto that he came to kill people that looked like me, and look like people who, were, who I represent in my community. He used an AK-47 style weapon. The governor came to El Paso and said, looked for ideas and made promises to our community. 
And one of them was to keep guns out of hands of people who um, are deranged individuals. His words, not mine. He ignored all of the other suggestions and obviously, he, um, he ignored almost all the other suggestions and obviously nothing happened this last session. However, we are, we are not stopping the work. Since the beginning of June, as Chairman Turner mentioned, our HGC members have held town halls all over the state. We have listened to our communities. We have listened to what they need and what they, not only what they want, but what they need. Because people don't need to be in fear. Texas House Democrats have long supported increased investments in public education and health care, and that includes mental health. But addressing only school security and mental health care is not enough to respond to both the El Paso shooting and the Uvalde shooting. From El Paso to Houston, people told us what they want. For example, at our town hall in El Paso, Texans called for the immediate action to require gun safety education before purchasing a firearm. Maria said, it is her chosen right, but they have to be educated on the usage and more regulations as to how they get these guns and what they're doing with these guns, especially assault rifles. In Brownsville, also on the border, people demanded enhanced background checks in the purchasing process. In Dallas, teachers told us to make it harder for children and young adults to access guns. And in Tarrant County and Williamson County, people strongly supported raising the age for purchasing assault rifles. In Travis County, most people at the town hall supported universal background checks. These voices are not isolated. There is a broad support for all the measures that we are talking about across the state, Republican and Democrat. Elected officials all over have repeatedly insisted that the governor call a special session, that we have to act now to honor the lives and to pass meaningful gun reform. Every, um, Chairman Turner talked about these officials, everyone from the Texas big city mayors to the county commissioner's court of Dallas, Tarrant, Travis, and Harris, Cameron, and Bear counties, are representing 46% of Texans. The Senate Democratic Caucus representing 41% of Texas and the editorial boards of the Houston Chronicle, the Austin American Statesman, and the San Antonio Express News each have written their own editorials asking for the same thing. The people of Texas not only want action now, but need action now. And I'd like to pass it over to my colleague, Representative Bowers. Thank you, Vice Chair Gonzalez. And um, again, thank you all for being here today. Uh, I have to say that the people of Texas do want answers. It is our duty to respond. And as a parent and a teacher, a former teacher that has been in that classroom with a, when a gun was outside the door, I have to say that based on everything we've heard from Texans across the state, Texas House Democrats are calling upon the governor to bring the legislature back for a special session so that we may address the pressing issues of gun violence and ensure that children in our state are safe at school and their parents feel safe to send them there. The 2022 and 23 school year starts in about two months and time is of the essence to pass common sense reforms. After the El Paso shooting in 2019, when I was sent here, the Texas House Democratic Caucus sent a letter to Governor Abbott asking him to call a special session to pass gun safety legislation to ensure a mass shooting event never befell on our state again. But here we are. And in 2019, he refused to call that special session. And today, nearly one month after another horrific mass shooting and after taking the time to listen to our constituents who are also his constituents, we are asking him to do that again on their behalf. We are asking Governor Abbott and the Texas legislature to pass the following common sense reforms that have bipartisan support across this state. Number one, 
Enacting extreme risk protective order laws and closing existing loopholes to current protective order laws. These laws would empower police and law enforcement personnel, family members and doctors to intervene when someone poses a danger to themselves or to others. This is the red flag law that the federal gun safety deal is incentivizing by providing federal funding to states that implement these crisis intervention, intervention services. Governor Greg Abbott himself publicly supported red flag laws following the Santa Fe shooting. And in Florida, after the governor signed extreme risk protect, protective orders into law following the Parkland shooting, Law enforcement officers have acted 8,000 times to keep guns out of the hands of individuals that the courts deem to be a threat themselves or to, to themselves or to others. Number two, to close background check loopholes. This is also included in the federal gun safety package. Number three, to require stolen guns be reported to law enforcement. Number four, raising the purchasing age for assault weapons to 21. As Vice Chair of Homeland Security and Public Safety, it is our duty to make sure these issues are addressed. And I would now, uh, it is an honor to pass the mic and the torch to my colleague, Representative and Chairman, my Chairman, Tracy King, that represents Uvalde. Thank you, Retta. Thank you, Retta. Thank you so much. And thank all of you for being here today and for the great job you do making sure that the public in Texas keeps up with what's going on today. I want to thank everybody uh, throughout the country that has sent me, all of my colleagues, members of the media, and other folks that have sent us, of course, thoughts and prayers uh, to check on me to see how we're doing there in Uvalde. Uh, tremendous amount of money and other types of resources have come in for counseling services for the families, the victims, and uh, anyone else that was directly affected or indirectly affected on this particular tragedy. I, uh, I moved to Uvalde, Texas when I graduated from college at uh, Texas A&M in 1983, and I moved to Uvalde on my, on my 23rd birthday. I showed up there for my first job out of college, and I've been there pretty much full time since then and uh, built a business in, 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 in that community. It's a community of 16,000 people. Many of you have been through there, uh, usually to go to Garner Park or Frio River or someplace like that. And it's also a community where every single person there for the rest of their life will be able to tell you exactly what they were doing at 11.30 in the morning on May 24th. Of 2022. I can tell you exactly where I was. I can tell you the first stories that I heard when they said there's a shooting. Uh, and then they said there might be some people shot, maybe a couple. And then the number just got bigger and bigger and bigger. And by the time you were through with lunch or whatever at one o'clock, you knew you had a tragedy of epic proportions in a town where we thought it would never happen. Why would it? Every single child that goes to the second, third, and fourth grade in Uvalde goes to Robb Elementary. That's the way that they, they operate it there. They don't have neighborhood schools because everybody wants to stay together and go all the way through. So we had our town. We covered up with media. Uh, all these folks, I, I, there must have been a 1,000 of them, it seemed like. And law enforcement from all over the country and the funerals. And uh, we went to lots and lots of funerals, lots of them. Um, I went to nearly every one of them. There was one in San Angelo that I couldn't go to, and there was one that I had a conflict. But I went to the funeral or the visitation. Uh, to the extent the families wanted to d visit with me, we visited with them. And that's what we did. And I want to thank the House Democratic Caucus for honoring my request to not have this press conference the day after the shooting. I asked them to wait till we had all the funerals, to wait for the families to grieve a little bit, because in my opinion, it does no good to anyone for a politician to stand up there and have a press conference before they have all the facts in hand. 
and they make statements that then have to retract. And the people that are hurt the most by this are those poor grieving families that want answers. And that's what they desperately want, and that's what we desperately need to give them. But those answers need to be accurate answers. And so thank each and every one of you that honored my request to do this, and you had your town hall meetings, and you gathered information from around Texas. I think that it shows a deliberation that the House of Representatives here is known for throughout the state of Texas. I've had a lot of people ask me how they can continue to help. There's a number of wonderful funds that have been set up, but the biggest one probably is what they call the Rob School Memorial Fund. And uh, if, if anybody wants to help contribute, then you'll be able to get that link pretty easily. Every day in every restaurant I go to, people come up to me on the street there in Uvalde, people that you would never dream would bring it up, and they've got an idea about gun laws or how the laws should be changed so that we don't have these types of things happen anymore. But they are happening, and they're going to continue to happen if we don't make a change. Because as the old expression goes, you know, the only thing that's the definition of insanity is to continue doing what you've been doing and expecting a different result. It's just not going to happen. And we got time to talk about what those things need to be during this special session that we hope the governor calls. And we have time to talk about all of those types of things, but this is what we do know. And this is what the people of Uvalde and the people of Texas are demanding without a shadow of a doubt, is something needs to be done to honor the legacy of the memory of those children and those teachers that were killed in this tragedy, that were killed in El Paso, that were killed in Santa Fe, and were killed in each and every one of these shootings that we've had throughout the state of Texas. And I want to say this, that it is human nature to want to blame someone. And that's nothing new. That's been going on since mankind walked on the face of the earth the first time. Everybody wants to be able to lay the blame at something. They want an answer. But there's one person to blame in this crisis, and that's that degenerate that walked into that school and started shooting up people. And he's dead. And so we want to be careful that we don't set out to blame other people because he's not around to blame anymore. So I thank all of you for being here. I thank all of you for your support and your bounty. God bless each and every one of you, and we look forward to working with you in a special session. Thank you. Chairman King, thank you very much for being here today, for your powerful words, and uh, for the incredible leadership you you have shown and continue to show for, for your community and your district that has been so devastated this last month. Um, they are very fortunate to have you as their representative. Uh, we will uh, now try to field a few questions, if you have any. You guys, sure. A lot of these proposals have, you know, you guys have floated similar or identical proposals in the past, um, but I guess I've also heard just kind of People are saying, you know, things might be different this time, you know, this one resonates a little bit differently. Is there any reason to believe, talking to your house colleagues on the other side of the aisle, or any, any reason to believe at all that these stand a better chance than after El Paso or any of the several recent past years? Sure. Uh, and, and if you don't, when, when you ask a question, if you don't mind just inter, uh, sure. uh, introducing uh, yourself and who yeah, you're with. Yeah, of course. Sorry. Uh, Jasper Chair from Houston Park. Of course. Yeah. Jasper. Yes. Good to see you. Thank you. Um, so uh, you're, you're right uh, in that the, these proposals we have put out today are, are very similar, if not uh, in many cases identical, to things we have advocated for in the past. Uh, in 2019, uh, after the El Paso uh, mass murder uh, at the Walmart, uh, we, our caucus sent a letter to, to the governor uh, and, and asked him to convene a special session. Uh, and we asked for several of these things that we've, again, asked for today. Of course, the governor, uh, in that instance, uh, ignored uh, our demand for, for immediate action. And instead, um, as, as we know, the legislature, um, when we convened in 2021, uh, not only didn't, didn't address some of those uh, proposals or any of those proposals, um, instead uh, kind of went the other direction uh, when it come, came to, to gun laws. Um, what, what I think uh, is, what I hope is different, um, is that this, this event in Uvalde has so shaken 
Texas and this entire country and, and really across the world just, just shaking people so much um, that, that little kids could be murdered uh, by an 18-year-old who was able to uh, legally purchase uh, an assault weapon. Um, and, and I think you, you're seeing uh, shifting attitudes. I think we, we've seen it in Washington, D.C., where our own senior senator, uh, John Cornyn, who um, is as dyed-in-the-wool Republican as, as, as anybody, uh, has, has helped lead a bipartisan coalition uh, to uh, advance some common sense gun safety legislation, uh, including uh, incentivizing uh, and making it easier for states to enact extreme risk protective orders, uh, which is one of the things we called for in 2019 and we are calling for again today. So if that, uh, if Senator Cornyn's legislation or the legislation he's, he's been part of crafting uh, becomes law, uh, and it looks like it has a good chance of doing so right now, uh, then Texas will be in the position of saying, are we going to accept these federal funds and are we going to design our own red flag laws, extreme risk protective orders to protect Texas? I think we should. And I think, uh, I hope that Senator Cornyn uh, will use his influence, uh, as, as he's been doing very well in, in D.C. here in Texas and talk to Governor Abbott and talk to other, and Governor Patrick and other Republican leaders uh, and say, hey, this is, this is how this would work and this is why it will be good for Texas. Uh, so I, th I think that there is the potential uh, for, uh, for some action here. Uh, finally, let me just say that uh, one of the reasons we wanted to do these town halls um, is because we wanted, uh, we wanted to hear from our constituents, but we wanted to be able to amplify their voices and, and make sure our Republican colleagues and our Republican leadership in the state also hears from them. And we see this borne out in, in public opinion polling. So there was a, last week, uh, Quinnipiac uh, released a, a new poll um, it showed that 58% of Texans support stricter gun laws. Uh, when you get more specific, the numbers go way up. 93% support background checks for all gun buyers. Close every loophole. Background check on every gun purchase. 93% support. I, I've looked at a lot of polls over the years. Very rarely do you have 93% support anything. 73% support raising the minimum legal age uh, to buy uh, any weapon. Uh, we're we're tailoring our request simply to, to assault weapons. So, uh, so we know, we know through data, we know through anecdotal evidence, there is broad bipartisan support uh, across Texas, and we hope that's what's different uh, when the governor uh, considers uh, what, what, he, what he and only he has the power to do, which is to call a special session. Sir? Gerald Harris, KHOU 11. Yes, Gerald. But I guess the reality is, is in election year, you saw the response that Senator Corey got among his what makes you actually think that the governor in an election will call a special session on guns when his base isn't, would not likely go along with it? Well, I, I, first, I, I think that this issue is bigger than politics, and I think any elected leader should, should look at it through that lens uh, about doing what's right for the people of Texas, not what's right in a political context. But if people want to think about politics, the Republican primary is over. Governor Abbott won the primary. The Republican convention is over. He, he got through the convention. Uh, and so uh, if you want to just think about the politics, I'll refer back to the poll numbers I just, I just cited, where Texans on a bipartisan basis overwhelmingly support uh, these proposals. Uh, and that's what I hope uh, the governor will consider if, if he's going to look at it through that lens. I hope he'll look at it through the lens of how do we protect Texans? How do we keep people safe? How do we reduce the likelihood of more mass shootings? How do we reduce uh, gun violence overall, whether it's a mass shooting or uh, a shooting in which one person or two people are, are killed, which happens also way too often in our state every single day? Yes, sir. Do we care what KX is? I do. I was just curious, speaking to these constituents in these town halls, how are they expressing themselves? Are, are they in tears? Are they, what, what, how, can you tell me I wasn't there? How are they taking this and how are they expressing themselves to you guys? It's, it's a great question. Um, I, I'll, I'll tell you uh, the town hall I was part of in, in Tarrant County, uh, where my colleagues uh, Ramon Romero and Nicole Collier and I uh, hosted a, a town hall. Uh, it, it ran the gamut. We had uh, people who 
uh, were, were very angry, uh, were uh, very uh, upset about what happened in Uvalde, upset about what happens, however, on every day in our communities uh, where people, young people in particular, uh, acquire a weapon that they shouldn't have and use it in an act of violence. Um, and it happens uh, all too often in, in Arlington, in Fort Worth, in, in, in other communities across the state. And so much of the conversation uh, that we had in Tarrant County uh, was focused on how do we keep guns out of the hands of people who shouldn't have them, whether that's because they pose a, a risk to themselves or to others, uh, or uh, they're simply too young. Uh, you know, stolen guns came up a lot, frankly, and that's one of the things that we're, that we're advocating for here. Uh, you know, teens being able to, to steal weapons and then use them in, in a crime. Um, and so, so it really ran the gamut. But I, if, if other, does any other member have a anecdote from a town hall they'd want to they'd want to share that it is yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for the question. Um, the, the town hall that I attended in Dallas, um, put on by our colleagues, uh, Representative and Chairman uh, Rafael Anchia and uh, Mary, Gen not Mary Gonzalez, Jessica uh, Gonzalez, um, parents were coming to the, the mic to ask questions in tears, barely able to speak. Uh, one thing that stuck out for me uh, were the parents that are kindergarten parents um, through this pandemic that mentioned that they didn't know the layout of the school, that they remember the first day of school letting their kids go at the door and walk around the corner hoping to see them at 2.30 or 3 o'clock. I, I can't imagine uh, as a parent, thank, thank God my kids are graduated from, from public schools. And I, I can't imagine not knowing what a cafeteria was. By God, I volunteered on PTA and subbed every day I could just to be there with my kids. People wondered with a college degree, why was I subbing in a school? But by God, I couldn't let my kids be there and not know. So that's how those parents are showing up. There was one lady, and I have to share this, Mr. Chairman, that came to the mic with her arms folded. But once she saw that we were listening, because you better know I had my iPhone out typing every note I could to bring back to the Capitol. Once she knew we were listening, she softened. So that, that's how they're showing up. It's either helpless, scared, they're standing strong, but, but then it's angry. Thank you. May, may I have a little Sure, yeah, go ahead. Representative Ernst Wiener. Uh, um, we held a town hall in San Marcos, Texas, and so much of the sentiments echo what Representative Bowers was saying. But one thing that stood out for me, you know, my, my district's relatively close to the Capitol, a lot of people who follow uh, our day-to-day -day shenanigans up here. And what I heard from multiple folks was this question of, do we actually have a chance and what is our opportunity to make change? Folks felt frustrated and desperate for us to take some meaningful action on gun violence. And we're looking for advice on what they should be fighting for and how they should be fighting for it. And I think that's a sentiment we all saw across Texas is people who were activated by this issue, who already have been activated, who have watched the, um, who, who have watched the lip service paid towards this issue after Santa Fe and after El Paso, and now are furious that we haven't taken action yet and are looking for a way to make that change on the ground. Um, and again, that, that fury is driven by this really desperate fear for the safety of their children. All right, do two more questions that we have members have to get committee to two committee meetings at 10 o'clock, so, sir. My name is Kyle Moss from KPBC Fox 7. Um, data suggests that there's a correlation between states with highest gun deaths and money contributed to politicians in that state. How do you feel about that and what can be done about that? Well, I haven't, I haven't seen the data you're, you're referring to, um, but, uh, 
I think that when you look at the data on, on gun violence and, and gun deaths, um, you just nationally, Texas has a higher uh, per capita uh, gun death gun death rate uh, than a lot of other large states. And, um, and clearly, there's a lot of reasons for that. Uh, I don't think any of us are, are saying it's one particular reason or cause. Uh, but we clearly uh, lax gun safety laws have something uh, to do with that. Uh, you know, one thing we haven't talked about today is uh, safe storage of guns. That's something that Representative Donna Howard has, has led on for uh, many years now. Uh, just, just storing a gun safely can do so much to prevent the gun being used in the commission of a crime, but also, you know, preventing a, a, a child from, from accessing a gun uh, and, and out of curiosity uh, picking it up and, and something uh, tragic happening, which also happens way too often in our state. So I think, there, I think there's a lot of different reasons, but I haven't seen that specific data. So last question. Uh, it, it's absolutely urgent that it be addressed now and that this legislature take action uh, before the new school year starts. That, that is what we have absolutely heard from parents uh, and, and others all across the state of Texas. Uh, but we are prepared to work anytime, anywhere to, to address this issue. Uh, so uh, we hope that the governor will listen to us and more importantly listen to our constituents, listen to everyday Texans and call a special session so we can act this summer. Uh, we hope that's what happens. If he does not, uh, you can rest assured that members of the House Democratic Caucus are going to be working all throughout the next session uh, on, these, on these proposals and other measures to keep Texans safe. So, thank you all very much for coming today. Thanks for sticking with us here on KXAN Live. Will Dupree coming to you from the KXAN Live studio. As the Texas House Democrats leave this uh, press conference after calling for a special legislative session to happen, uh, Governor Greg Abbott is the one who holds that power to be able to bring lawmakers back outside of a regular session uh, to consider certain issues and he would lay out that agenda. Uh, what the Democrats there are calling for is uh, a number of proposals, gun reforms and other things and the like. After the Uvalde Deadly School shooting, they're asking for uh, the purchase age to be raised to 21 for certain weapons like the AR-15. That's the type of gun that the shooter used in the Uvalde school shooting. They're also asking for red flag laws to be approved and uh, for additional background checks on gun purchases. And you heard there just a moment ago about uh, the potential for safe gun storage. We have seen similar calls in this last week or so from 13 mayors of big Texas cities, both Republicans and Democrats, sending a letter to Governor Abbott asking for a special legislative session. The Texas Senate Democrats held a news conference also earlier this week, pressing for those very same things that we just heard a few moments ago. Now, we did reach out to the governor's office earlier this week when we had these calls for uh, a special session coming up again. And his office, his press secretary, sent a statement. I'm going to read that to you in part. Uh, we should point out that the governor did call and ask for special legislative committees to look into policy recommendations and investigate the shooting that happened in Uvalde. This week, the Texas Senate held its first two public hearings related to uh, the Uvalde school shooting. The Texas House Investigative Committee has also been holding hearings behind closed doors and executive session, interviewing a number of people, including the Uvalde school police chief, who was placed on administrative leave last night by the district. But again, here is that statement from the governor's office. His press secretary here said, quote, as Governor Abbott has said from day one, all options remain on the table as he continues working with state and local leaders to prevent future tragedies and deploy all available resources to support the Uvalde community as they heal. More announcements are expected in the coming days and weeks to protect Texas communities as the legislature deliberates proposed solutions. So the governor's office has not shared 
support for calling a special session to look into gun reforms and other um, legislation that lawmakers have proposed in the last few weeks. However, we will keep reporting about this, so please stay with us here on KXAN. Once again, I'm Will Dupree in the KXAN Live Studio. Thank you all for watching here this morning. We'll see you back here at another time. Please, everybody, stay safe and healthy out there and take care.